right. Hello. How is everyone doing today, tonight, in the study? <laughs> we'll get started in a couple minutes, so I just wanted to get it going, give people a chance to chime in in a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm not sure how this changes anything really, but uh, who knows? Maybe it's the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, us too. It's hot. We are in the triple digits. <clears throat> For, I think all the way through well today I think we hit triple digits and then I think we're gonna hit triple digits all the way through Wednesday so yeah it's hot really hot so anywho just give it another minute or two here and let give people a chance to, to chime in uh, so more Colossians coming right up. Um, there's something about how you might be able to um, <clears throat> run like a poll, or maybe it's on my end, for questions or something else like that. I'm not sure if there, anything changed on your end or not. But. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Uh, Wesley, ah, I see you, Wesley. How are you? <clears throat> Laura, how are you? Welcome. We are doing good, Lisa. Doing good. Staying cool. Saved dinner tonight, guys. Saved dinner. Kind of. I just found a part that was missing. That's all. <laughs> dinner is good for everyone. Keeps everybody in their right mind. <laughs> oh, okay, guys. Well... I say we start. Um, let's see. So Colossians 3, uh, verses 5 through 11 <clears throat> is kind of where we're going to be in today. Just going to try to, um, I guess I'm just going to try and just give some context to it. Um, And just see what the Lord does. I'm kind of doing the same thing that I did last time. I just made, you know, just like a few little uh, bullet point kind of deals, you know. Didn't make a whole lot of notes. Uh, but I just want to, you know, Jesus take the wheel, I guess. <laughs> so let's we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. So let me, um, I guess let me just start by reading. Oh, hi, Dee. How are you? Good to see you. I will read it in uh, the New American Standard Version. Uh, here's what it says. This is 5 through 11. Uh, Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. And in them you also once walked when you were living in them. 
But now you also put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices, and have put on the new self, who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, uh, Scythian, I guess is how you say that, slave and free man, but Christ is all and in all. So that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. It's kind of a, <clears throat> I guess if you're, it's probably not one that you want to just uh, read for your, you know, during your morning breakfast. It's kind of a downer a little bit. It's a little bit of a warning. But it really does make a whole lot of sense, you know, within context, right? Um, I think, uh, yeah, it's actually good news. And, but let me, let's just start with the whole, uh, um, the, whole, the first verse there in five, where he says, um, to put to death, therefore, um, or in the NASB, therefore consider, um, another way of thinking about therefore is these things being so is another way of understanding therefore. So in other words, because what I've just said is true, which we've talked about several times, I've mentioned this several times uh, throughout Colossians, is that it's, it's qualifying this verse. Um, it qualifies the previous and what he's about to say. So since this is true, um, <clears throat> you know, quit focusing on those silly things, right? Um, the other part that I find very interesting about that verse is <clears throat> he says um, the member, okay, so he says here the members um, of your earthly body as dead to immorality. Let me read it to you in another translation. Um, so verse 5, so put to death, therefore, the components of your earthly um, ideas, right? And so then he lists off the sexual morality, impurity, lust, evil, desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Remember last Thursday when I talked about uh, life, Zoe, and how that incorporates or encapsulates um, the nature of the Father. And also remember how Jesus says, he says, I am the way, I am the life. And so here in verse 5, Paul says, put to death, therefore, the earthly ways. How about that? Put those things away. And then Jesus says, I am the way. Put, put aside, put to death the old you and take on my new. As Jesus says, take on me. So Jesus is the way and Jesus is Zoe. He is the life. He is the nature fully expressed of the Father face to face, right? Like we see that in his face. In verse 6, um, <clears throat> We, you know, he talks about because of these, the, the wrath of God, which, by the way, um, wrath is not always a negative. Um, in the Mirror uh, Study Bible, uh, Francois makes note of it. And, um, you know, he, he talks about how a lot of times wrath is um, an expression of reaching out. 
Um, it's a very strong desire. It is um, to long for. Um, it'd be another to extend oneself, you know, for the sake of another. And so, <clears throat> looking at it from that perspective, when when you read, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Now, one thing too, to that I think about there is also that. Um, that Hebrews, they don't have a future tense. So it kind of can be a little bit confusing. However, if with that understanding is that you realize that the wrath of God is now. It is here. And he essentially will have it no other way, right? He's, he's not just going to let a lost sheep be lost. He... He will go to the ends of the earth to find or to go get what has always belonged to him. Um, so it's good news. So there you go. So there you have it, right? Um, <clears throat> the other interesting thing, interesting thing about verse 6 is that the old manuscripts don't include... Uh, the part where it says that last section where it says on the sons of uh, of disobedience uh, th that was added later so when when you look at the older manuscripts uh, apparently they're not it's not even there um, I don't don't ask me why I don't know why but um, why they, they they decided to add it later um, does no harm in it being there uh, I don't think as long as you're reading it within you know good context and with a good theological Christ centered uh, perspective um, <clears throat> and so if you want to keep it there um, you know disobedient is to is literally referring to anyone who is bent on not accepting the truth right it, it, it is someone that is willfully not wanting to receive you know his his love his grace his gift right willfully think about that that's kind of that's what disobedience is referring to so if you want it there that's disobedience if you don't want it there well it's wasn't there to begin with from old manuscripts right um, and then, and so here's why I think it's like here, here's why I say it's now, because in the following verse, he says, when you lived among them, you also used to, now hear this, walk in these ways. Connecting the dot there a little bit. Uh, so verse five, he says to put, put those earthly concepts the the earthly ways of how you used to live life put those away essentially earthly ways as I was what as I was saying that Jesus is the way and in verse 7 he says when you used to also walk in these ways you see the connection um, I think I find it very interesting and and again it's good news <clears throat> Um, so, oh, and, uh, so what I was mentioning about the wrath of God, why I think is now and not a future thing is because you and I once walked in disobedience and now we're not. And so here we are together rejoicing in this good news and the only reason we're enjoying this good news is because of our father and because jesus and because of holy spirit together their perichoresis their relationship their union um and he demonstrates it for us openly as paul says in um previous verses that he uh remember he um <clears throat> made a show 
of all of those things publicly. Do you remember reading through that? While he was on the cross? Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so, anyway, so walk in these ways uh, or within the these ways that were that are foreign uh, to us they're they're not who we are uh, and then so moving along right so verse eight then he then he re reinforces you know put put these things aside like anger and rage and malice slander filth, filthy language from your lips <clears throat> and you know and to don't lie to one another and since you've taken off the old self with his practices. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, let's see here, verse 10 and 11, which I just wanted to touch base on this. Uh, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, um, in the image of its creator. And uh, I find that to be wonderful that I'm so glad that it's there now remember you know none of us are saved through knowledge right we're, we're none of us are Gnostics I hope not um, we're not saved as I've said before and as I've as you've heard it been said before is that none of us are saved by what we know we're not saved by knowing the right things or, uh, or damned by knowing the wrong things. Um, we are saved by the person, you know, Christ, the anointed man, right? And so knowing that it, you know, knowledge, right? So why is knowledge there? Well, interestingly enough, if you do a little word study on that, you'll find that it's about the rec it's referring to a recognition huh. not something so it's not a recognition off of uh, you know from our own will or our own strength it doesn't it doesn't work that way you know God remember it's that God first loved us right um, and so in return we get to love him and so it's the same, it's the same thing. You carry that over into this verse, carry that understanding and understand that it's the recognition, but not by our own strength, but by his doing, he reveals himself to us. And he says it in the image of its creator. Remember Paul, he says in Galatians, that uh, that he was pleased to reveal his son in me. Uh, some some translations will have two, but again, you do a nice, you do a little, a quick little word study, and you'll find out that it's in, in within him, within Paul. You see, I mean, it's it's beautiful. He just he, Paul just keeps. <laughs> putting an, uh, an additional nail into our coffin of we are dead to ourselves and alive to him. And, uh, <clears throat> and so then uh, verse 11. Uh, so here uh, there's no Greek or Jew circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or uh, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. And uh, so here meaning uh, in uh, in Jesus in the image of Jesus in his face in his person in his nature in his life there there is no distinction between one man and another it, so that we're all found in him it, it is uh, as, as um, Francois says in his Mirror Study Bible is that in the face of Jesus, we see our birth. We see where everything started. We see where it ends. 
uh, which is in him. It's within him. So, the big takeaway for me is stop trying to do it your own way and accept his ways. Rest in his ways. He is the way, the only way. And there, you don't go into the kingdom by your own way. I hope, all right guys, well I hope <laughs> that that was uh, something, some nuggets in there for you guys. Um, that is all that I have for you guys today, I think. I don't think I have anything else. Nothing else is coming to mind. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I will wrap this up and then we'll hang out. I'll see you in a little bit.